welcome to this course of energy conservation and management myself on irvan sarkar assistant professor department of mechanical engineering of gis college of engineering kollan first of all course object the course objective of this paper is to impart basic knowledge to the students about current energy scenario energy conservation audit and management to inculcate among the students systematic knowledge and skill about assessing the energy efficiency energy auditing and energy management course outcome upon successful completion of this course student will be able to number 1 obtain knowledge about energy conservation policy regulations and business practices number 2 design to improve the thermal efficiency by designing suitable systems for heat recovery and co generations number 3 analyze the energy audit methods learn to identify the areas deserving tighter control to save energy expenditure number 4 evaluate the cost benefit analysis of various investment alternatives for meeting the energy needs of the organization the course outcomes and program outcomes are mapped in this way next is course content this course contains total several modules in module 1 there is the energy resources finite and renewable sources number 2 the need for energy conservation estimation of finite fuel resources hubbard's model for oil reserve number 3 total energy concept chp cycles and their applications number 4 waste heat recovery waste heat exchangers commercial waste heat recovery devices recapitators regenerative heat exchangers heat pipes in number 5 module industrial energy conservation in industrial insulations case studies for have air compressor mechanical handling and other system study of energy efficient method in number 6th module energy audit basic steps graphical representation case studies in number 7th module the economics of energy saving schemes cost investment analysis recommended books number 1 energy management marpi wr and g mackey number 2 energy management audit and conservation de gurun number 3 stock and crop energy efficiency and number 4 tarnar energy management and so first of all we will start from module 1 that is energy resources finite and renewable sources in today's session we will discuss about that lecture 1 that is the energy resources the learning outcome learning outcome of this session is 
to understand the different energy sources. So first of all, we need to define what is energy. Energy is the capacity of physical system to perform work. Energy exists in several forms such as heat, kinetic or mechanical energy, light, potential energy, electrical or other forms. According to the law of conservation of energy, the total energy of system remains constant. Though energy may transform into another form. Energy is one of the major inputs for economic development of any country. In the case of developing countries, the energy sectors assume a critical importance in view of ever increasing energy needs requiring huge investment to meet them. Energy can be classified into several types based on the following criteria. That is primary and secondary energy, commercial and non-commercial energy, renewable and non-renewable energy. So first of all, we need to discuss in terms of primary and secondary energy. The sources of primary and secondary energy, that is it may be a renewable energy or it may be a non-renewable energy. In case of non-renewable energy, that is coal, nuclear, natural gas and petroleums are there. And in case of renewable energy, hydroelectric plants are there. So although these are all the conventional one. So first of all, coal, it can be extracted in an open or deep mines, depending upon the nature of the sources. It requires processing, that is preparation to remove the dark particles, etc. And the coal is we can use for the primary energy purpose to generate steam or thermal energy. While preparation, the purification of that part that becomes, becomes coke. A major portion of this coal goes to power station, that is thermal power station, generally coal-fired coal fired station, power station, and where the electricity is generated. Next is hydroelectric plant. Due to the potential difference, the hydraulic energy can turn a generator that is hydroelectric generator and ultimately power is generating and electricity producing. So it requires some suitable geographic location. Nuclear energy, the nuclear materials found in mining, it requires enrichment and then in nuclear power plant, the enriched fuel, from enriched fuel, the power is generated and by this process, electricity is generated. Normally, uranium-238, thorium, etc. are the material, raw material. Natural gas, it is found in gas oil. It requires treatment to remove the dark particle, etc. And this natural gas also can be fed into that gas turbine plant to generate electricity. 
otherwise natural gas can be used directly to generate thermal energy petroleum petroleum abundantly used in today's world it is found in oil well it requires cracking and refining while cracking and refining process many byproducts are produced that is lpg petrol diesel or fuel oil petrochemicals product etc a part of these where the suitable arrangements are there can go to the power station to produce electricity and some different uses of the byproducts are that is lpg mainly used for cooking purposes in household petrol and diesel and fuel oil used for to run the motor vehicles and petrochemical industries the other byproducts can be used in different ways so primary energy sources are those that are found or stored in nature common primary energy sources are coal oil natural gas and biomass such as wood although biomass is limited we we are using other primary energy source available includes nuclear energy from radioactive substance thermal energy stored in earth interior and potential energy due to earth's gravity primary energy sources are mostly converted in industrial utilities into secondary energy sources for example coal oil or gas converted into steam and electricity primary energy can also be used directly some energy resources have non energy use for example coal and natural gas can be used in feedstock in a fertilizer plant next is that is commercial energy and non commercial energy the commercial energy is defined the energy sources that are available in market for a definite price are known as commercial energy by far most important forms of commercial energy are electricity coal and refined petroleum products example of commercial energy electricity lignite coal oil natural gas etc non commercial energy the energy sources that are not available in the commercial market for a price are classified as non commercial energy non commercial energy sources includes such as fuels such as firewood cattle dung and agricultural wastage which are traditionally gathered and not bought at a price used specially in rural household for example firewood agro waste in rural areas solar solar energy for water heating electricity generation for drying grains fish and fruits animal power for transport threshing 
lifting water for irrigation, crushing sugar cane, wind energy for lifting water and electricity generation. Next is very important. The energy can be divided into two parts accordingly. Renewable and non-renewable energy. Renewable energy is the energy obtained from sources that are essentially inexhaustible. Examples of renewable resources include wind power, solar power, geothermal energy, tidal power, and hydroelectric power. The most important features of renewable energy is that it can be harnessed without the release of harmful pollutant. Non-renewable energy is the conventional fossil fuel such as coal, oil and gas which are likely to deplete with time. Next is type of non-renewable energy. First of all, oil. Crude oil is milky yellow to black liquid and is usually found in underground areas called reservoir. The advantages are that it is easy to produce and transport. High energy Disadvantages is that it is non-renewable in nature and it is region specific and it is fastly running out and environmental damage from spills high greenhouse gas producer. So as we know the oil or petroleum product is the primary energy consumption of motor vehicles etc running throughout this world these are all nowadays is increasing prices increasing trend and while cracking and refining from this oil or petroleum various byproducts are produced like lpg petrol, diesel, naphtha, tar, etc. and many other products, byproducts. Mainly, the LPG or liquefied petroleum gas is used for household cooking purpose. The aerofuel or white kerosene is the another byproduct that comes from oil or petroleum which is extensively used as an fuel in aviation industry. Petrols and diesel, the most two commercial fuels are used in to run the automotive vehicles. In some cases, in a captive power plant of an, any industry, diesel or fuel oil is an alternative of the energy generation through the IC engine or combustion engine generation set where electricity is the produced primarily. So and the other byproducts are that is naphtha, the tar etc have some different uses. The problems or 
in this sector is that is it is non renewable type it is region specific in the middle east of asia it is found a lot amount about 65 to 70 percent of the total oil reserves in this region and this region is a lot of chaos are happening throughout the world so the pricing of this petroleum product is not fixed it get fluctuated and there is an uncertainty takes place when this region has some problem on the other hand in petroleum product it gives high energy output and with today's modern technology it is easy to produce and transport but it is damage the environment that is the carbon dioxide carbon monoxide sulfur dioxide that are producing by the burning of this fuel that causes the environmental damage and the greenhouse gas effect is affected by the use of this petroleum product next is natural gas which is main ingredients in natural gas is methane as a gas or a compound and some other products are also there that is bitumen etc it is composed of one carbon atom and four hydrogen atom the prones it is found abundant in nature but it site specific and it is fewer greenhouse gases than coal or oil so it produces less amount of pollutant the prones are there that is it is expensive to transport that is the site specific only that is transportation it requires a huge amount of investment and it is expensive greenhouse gas producer so although it is produces fewer greenhouse gas than coal or oil but it produce greenhouse gases a lot it is non renewable type many of the area that are now being explored and developed for natural gas productions are wildness area and development of this area have huge impact on the areas environment and wildlife population so generally the natural gas etc are found in in wildlife area or in hilly areas that is it depends on the extraction of this natural gas and it requires to be shifted from one part to another part for production purposes so for this reason this fuel became expensive and it may it is harmful for the wild wilderness areas and it may damage the areas environment and wildlife population next is that is coal which are abundantly used last 200 or 300 years a combustible black or brownish black sediment rock composed mostly of carbon and hydrocarbon most abundant fossil fuel produced in the us india china etc the energy in coal comes from energy stored by plants and light hundreds of millions of years ago when the earth was 
partly covered with swampy forest. So coal we are using for many centuries, last 250 to 300 years. It is very a, it is very reliable source of energy. Although the advantages is that it is found abundant in nature, still now, it can give high energy output. Now the cones are there, that is, it is non-renewable type. Firstly, it is depleting. Extraction is destructive to the environment, as we know, that is, it is a type of fossil fuel. So extraction of coal, hampering the environment, and high greenhouse gas producer. So it produces a lot of greenhouse gas, and a part of global greenhouse gas effect can be seen today. So our development in today's development is going through how we can fastly shift it from fossil fuel energy sources to non-fossil fuel that means renewable energy sources. So Another type of fossil fuel sources that is called nuclear power based on uranium generally. So nuclear fission atoms are split apart from the smaller atom releasing energy. Nuclear power plant use this energy to produce power. Although nuclear power is very expensive because lot of constraints are there and it is not very reliable in today's technology. The advantage is that is it produces no greenhouse gases and very efficient energy producer and it is reliable. It is found abundant in nature but the extraction is going on and that processing it requires a lot of energy. The cones are there that is expensive to build and maintain reactor. So although some damages occurs during last 50 years of nuclear power generation and radioactive waste it hampers the environment and human and other wildlife. It produces radioactive waste wastes and de decompose of this radioactive waste is a major problem. That is difficult to dispose of radioactive waste. Heated waste water is harmful to aquatic life. Say a lot of cold water is required to cool the reactor and to produce the electricity. So if we go for directly use the water from sea or river bed, which is very harmful for the aquatic life. And there is another consist there that is terrorism threat with spent fuel. So if explosion occurs, so it will be very damaged to the human life and society. Although in nuclear power station, that is controlled fission is takes place. Next is renewable energy and sources. So our primary goal is to shift the, from the non-renewable energy sector to renewable energy sector. Type of renewable energy, that is, Solar energy. Solar energy is the most readily available and free source of energy since prehistoric time. Solar energy can be utilized through 
two different routes such as solar thermal route and solar electric routes. Wind energy, it is basically harnessed to wind power to produce electricity. The kinetic energy of the wind is converted to electricity. Wind energy is a type of indirect type of solar energy. Hydro energy, the potential energy of falling water captured and converted to mechanical energy by water wheels, that is hydroelectric generator, and powered the start of the industrial revolution. Although hydraulic hydro energy is today's became conventional one, but this type of energy is site specific. Not everywhere we can install. It requires some certain geographic location and initial investment is higher than the other type of power generation investment. Tidal energy, it is also a type of indirect solar energy. The head of water is used to drive turbines to generate electricity from the elevated water in the basin as in hydroelectric dams. And biomass, it is a renewable energy sources derived from the carbonaceous waste of various human and natural activities. It is derived from numerous sources, including the byproduct from the wood industry, agricultural crops, raw material from the forest, household waste, etc. So, so much focus is going on this biomass energy. And it is estimated that one day from the biomass energy, a lot of power can be derived. So we know that from the biomass, we can produce the biodiesel oil. Generally, it is the organic material made from plants and animals, that is microorganism, and different processes are there to produce the biodiesel or biofuel. The prones, that is cleaner burning than oil, it is abundant and it is renewable. Type. The crones are there, causes food price to rise because we use food grains to make ethanol. Greenhouse gas producer. So although it is comes under the renewable energy sources, but it produces the greenhouse gas. Not efficient to transport the raw material. So still now it is in developing stage. Some blending or mixing of the petroleum or diesel takes place nowadays with the biodiesel or the ethanol and so that to some extent we can reduce the fossil fuel burning. Geothermal energy that is the earth beneath temperature is utilized to produce the electricity. That is temperature hotter than the sun surface are continuously produced inside the earth by the slow decay of radioactive particles. A process that happens in all rocks. So generally in mountainous region or in hot dry rock system region, this type of energy or the potential of this geothermal energy can be found. The prones, that is low greenhouse gas producer, renewable in some places, energy and cost efficient. The problem is that 
few geothermal fields that are not on protected land. So geothermal energy based on site specific and it requires initial high investment. Although running this type of industry or power plant is less than the other industry or power plant. Hydropower as we have discussed that is due to the potential heat generated by nature water energy or water flowing through an water wheel that is turbo generator that is hydroelectric generator or that produces the electricity the pros is that or advantages no greenhouse gases can generate lot of electricity and it is completely renewable type Consists that is can damage environment where dam is built. That is, it can changes the nature, water temperature, chemistry, flow characteristics, and slit load, all which can lead to significant changes in the ecology. And rocks and lead forms of river upstream and downstream, and it is expensive to build. So there are potential of hydroelectric power generation throughout the world, but it is site specific and generally it is found in mountainous region and it is expensive to build, but running this water power or hydropower is very less compared to the other field. Next is solar energy. So, so much attention is nowadays playing on this solar energy. That is solar rays or radiations that reach the earth. This energy can be converted into other form of energy such as heat and electricity. So there is an possibilities of direct heat conversion by photovoltaic cell or by some indirect method that means the by the sun rays hitting the a fluid that is called some power plant fluid that produces and again that expands in the conventional power plant so prones are there or advantages no greenhouse gases released when located on buildings have limited impact on environment and it is completely limited. Prones expensive investment to install and it is not effective in areas with limited light. So solar power is extensively uses in the dry regions where the, where the sun rays in a day can be found more that is in equator zones region in polar region it is not so effective wind power wind turbines uses blade the wind flows over the blade creating lift like the effect of airplane wind which causes them to the blades are connected to a drive shafts that turns an electric generator to produce electricity. The advantages of this sector is no greenhouse gas produces renewable in some places. Prones limited to areas of reliable high winds, high initial costs, extensive land can be used and harms bat and migrating birds. So in many parts of this world, including India also, this wind power is installed. Now the primary energy consumptions by fuel that is country wise, 
USA is the highest one till now date. Next followed by China, Russian Federation, Japan, United Kingdom, India, etc. So India, in India, we heavily dependent on coal sector, oil sector. Natural gas and nuclear energy sector is not so boom, but hydroelectric sector, we need to be improved. And if we compare it with that total world, that is a major, that is some 80 to 85% of energy that is produced by this fossil fuel energy. So firstly, we need to develop such kind of technologies so that we can shift from this fossil fuel technology to this renewable energy technologies. Energy distribution between developed and developing countries. Although 80% of world population lies in the developing countries, their energy consumption amount is to only 40% of world total energy consumption. The high standard of living in the developed countries are attributable to high energy consumption level. Also, rapid population growth in the developing countries has kept the per capita energy consumption low compared with that of highly industrialized developed countries. The world average energy consumption per person is equivalent to 2.2 tons of coal. In industrialized countries, people is four to five times more than the world average and nine times more than the average of developing countries. For example, an American uses 32 times more commercial energy than an Indian. So with this, we are likely to conclude. These are the references. So thank you for joining this session.